So Carol Heyman, thank you so much for being here with me today. Um, I'm at 620 Art Gallery and behind me, you can see some of Carol's um, artwork. And I'm gonna go ahead and ask Carol some questions so we can get a better insight into why she does what she does. Um, Carol, can you first just tell us a little bit about yourself and give us a little background info about um, why you became an artist, when you became an artist, and just a little background info about yourself. Great. Well, first of all, I just want to thank you for inviting me to be in your gallery. It's a lovely gallery. And oh, thank you. Um, it's, yeah, being part of Print Austin is really special too. So I'm really thrilled about it. So thanks for that. Awesome. So um, I've been an artist for um, ever since I can remember, really, since at least teen, being a teenager. And I went to the University of Texas and got um, a degree in art history and a degree in studio art. Um, but really, um, there aren't a, a whole lot of professions out there for people who are artists, but I did actually launch into it right away and be, uh, I became an art teacher in Jamaica. I was a Peace Corps volunteer and I went down there as an art teacher at the Jamaica School of Art. Oh, that's cool. And so I uh, really liked that experience and I wanted to continue on figuring out a way that I could go into development. And so I came back to Austin and got um, a master's degree in anthropology. Um, uh, and so I was thinking that I would um, have a job somewhere uh, doing income generating activities, uh, education for people somewhere, women especially. But um, as soon as I graduated, I got a, a job as a professor of anthropology at Austin Community College. So. I ended up just staying and being there. Um, I did that for 28 years and now I'm retired. So, but all the time I was there doing anthropology, I was also being an artist too. Um, and then I was mostly doing photography and I used my photographs and my course coursework uh, during my lectures. I would illustrate them with my photo own photographs from various places that I traveled. And so, um, about uh, 10 years ago or so, I took some courses at Flatbed Press on how to make, uh, make your photos into prints, printmaking. And so I really got into it then and loved it. And so um, I hung out a lot at, at Flatbed and printed there. And then I moved over to Slugfest Print Studio. So that's where I print now. And so, um, Actually, I'm getting into the process now more than the history, but let me let me go in that direction for a okay. minute. Um, so, so what I do is I take take photographs, uh, lots of them, all different places whenever I travel, and uh, then the ones that look, I think that would look really good monochromatic, uh, I turn into photo intaglio prints. So that's that's what those are, and uh, the way that I do that is. Uh, now I'm working with digital photos, but when I first started, I used uh, um, analog photos and, for film. Um, and so, but the process is basically the same. You start off with a photograph and then you make a transparency and you can do that with overhead projector film. So since being a teacher, you know, I had, <laughs> had access to that and knowledge of it. So, uh, and then you take the, the photograph that's on the film and you lay it on a photosensitive polymer plate. So these are steel plates with a plastic coating that's light sensitive to uh, ultraviolet light. So you can do them in the sun and so they're called solar plates sometimes. Uh, but I actually use a little light box because uh, that you can control it more with timing and so on. So I do that with my light box and then I have a plate, you just wash it in water so it's non-toxic, a non-toxic method wash it in water and then harden it. And then, uh, then I take the plate over to Slugfest Print Studio and use their intaglio press over there and, and print over there. So, um, so I do have a studio and that's where I am now, but um, what the work that I do here is mostly on the computer with the digital photos, turning them into monochromatic, um, changing the size and that, that sort of thing. Okay. Uh, yeah, so that's that's basically my process. 
And so along the way nowadays, um, I do, I guess I've kind of gotten into a rut because I kind of do use the same kind of paper, same size, same frames, um, but that makes everything easier to interchange. So I can take the frame, take a picture out of a frame and put another one in and so on. And it's much easier. Yeah. And uh, mostly I use uh, Arches uh, BFK white, um, co French cotton rag paper, because I love the feel of it. It's so smooth and, and like fabric. Mm -hmm. I have done some fabric art too, so it feels like that. Um, but occasionally I use handmade paper. So if I'm visiting somewhere and I find out about um, a place that makes handmade paper, like in Mexico, there's a lot of bark paper there. So whenever I go to Mexico, I always buy some bark paper and bring it back and do a little work with that. So, but, but mostly I use French cotton reeds paper. That sounds so. really cool. In your process, do you use damp paper? The wet paper? Dampen. Oh yes, yes, you always wet it. Uh -huh. uh, so you soak the paper for a while and then uh, you lay it, you ink the plate and then you lay the damp paper on the plate. And when you run it through the press, it makes the, the uh, plate indents into the paper. So uh -huh. you have this really nice edge. And uh, that's another thing that I love about printing. So yes, the damp paper makes a big difference. Um, and so the different, dry like the different type of paper that you use, does it affect uh, what your print looks like? Oh yeah, yeah. Um, that's why I like white because it makes um, the whites of the photo um, kind of come through. And so it makes it sort of glow, I think a lot of times. And then um, also you can change that a little bit and bring another color into it by doing chinclé. I don't think uh, there aren't any chinclé ones that, that you have, but um, right. you can, um, which you glue another paper to the backing paper, and then you print on that. And so you can bring a third color in. So they're not all monochromatic, but most yeah. mostly they are. Mm -hmm. Well, that sounds like quite a process from start to finish, and also quite a scientific process with yeah. <laughs> the sunlight and all that. Right, yeah, about. and timing, you have to get the timing right, and it takes a lot of experimentation um, to, to get all, to bring all the factors together. Yeah, it sounds very prescriptive, but in fact, there's a lot of trial and error uh, in terms of timing and mixing the ink and the colors that you want to use and so on, yeah. Mm -hmm. Thanks for sharing all that with us, because I know, um, like, when people come into the gallery, especially with this printmaking show, they don't really understand or know much about printmaking. Um, right. Mm -hmm. They look at the image and just see the image and that's all they see, but they don't really know the process. So thank you right. for explaining that. Um, well, artists love um, to talk about their work and their <laughs> process. And so Most on, artists so. do. Some artists yeah. might be a little shy about it. Um, so I have a couple more questions for you. Um, I know you said that you you started with photography. Is that right? Have you right. Well, I, I've done all different kinds of art, arts okay. and crafts, weaving, um, you know, things things like that. A little painting, drawing. Not so much of that anymore. Although I do still have a loom, and I do still weave. But um, photography, yeah, is my main thing. Awesome. Um, so I wanted to ask you, kind of going in that direction. Um, how has your practice changed over time, I guess, from your early years of art making to the present? Um, gee, let's see. Uh, I don't even know where to start with that. Because <laughs> you can keep it <laughs> I've, I've been doing uh, photography for a really long time and the changes there, you know, I've um, always done a little black and white, a little slides, a little color prints, you know, snapshot kind of things, all, yeah. all of that all yeah. along. But then, um, I don't know, let's see, about um, not that long ago, I guess, five or six years ago, everything went digital and it was like it happened overnight almost really. Um, and that was a big change for me to go from print to, to digital. So um, I still have all my slides. And in fact, during this pandemic time, one of my projects is turning all my slides, not all, a few into 
uh, digital format. In fact, actually, you can see, I think, let me turn my uh, camera over here and get out of the way. See that um, bookcase there with the yes. binders? Those are all slides. Oh, wow. So I have, there's about 40 notebooks that are full of uh, slides. And um, so I'm very slowly working through those. I've done three notebooks so far. So at this rate, I figure it'll take me about 10 years to <laughs> turn them all into digital, wow. <laughs> digital photographs. Um, but it, it's making me go and look at uh, every, things that I've done in the past. So um, I'm, I'm actually really enjoying it, even though it's really, really slow. Yeah. It takes about um, six, six minutes to do four slides. So, you know, because they have to be slowly pulled through the scanner. But, but I'm, I'm kind of enjoying it. So I'll keep at it for a while anyway. Yeah, so that, that's a big change going from analog to digital. Mm -hmm. And then um, and then turning them into prints, that's, I've been doing that for about 10 years. So the, the first part of that was using actual photographs and then the, right. the most recent images are start off as digital. So they don't have to go through that, that process there. Yeah. So um, uh, let's see, so what are some other changes? Um, well, all along the way, I've also been doing uh, other things like knitting and crochet and weaving. And I just uh, now have a granddaughter who's one and a half, and oh. I wove <laughs> wove a blanket for her, and just different things like that. So I'm all always doing different aspects of art, uh, not not just photography. Right. I don't do too much drawing these days, but yeah. Mm -hmm. Cool. I'd like to talk to you specifically about the pieces in this show. Um, here at 620 Art Gallery, and you can see two behind me. Um, yes. And do you have a name for this series, or is it a series? Um, yeah, it is a series, um, and it's called, called the Shadow Series. And um, what I'm looking for here is I'm trying to tap into our sort of um, popular culture and mythology kind of aspect of it. Uh, to, to draw people in, to make them look at it and to make them, you know, wonder what the story is behind this, but also to bring their own thoughts about and background as to what could be going on in the, in the picture. Mm -hmm. so, um, so most of the ones that you have are from near the Devil's River, which is in West Texas, and we go out camping there quite often. And um, when, when you're there, you really feel like all of people who have been there before you are kind of in the atmosphere around mm. you, um, that they're sort of, their, their shadows are still there. And so you catch a glimpse of yourself because they're all my, pictures of my shadow, right? Mostly, some of them are other people, but mostly they're me. And in there, uh, you know, especially when the sun's low in the sky, you see these really long shadows and it makes you think about uh, how, how the people who were there before you interpreted them. And so they kind of draw on a lot of Native American mythology ideas about um, how the world was created. The uh, Earth Mother, she came down to the earth and, and she, um, she cried and her tears made, made streams and she took rocks and turned them into people and things like that. And, and the way I got started on this was um, the very first one I did was uh, two, two shadows by the river. And it made me think of this children's story that I used to read to my son when he was little um, of uh, uh, the Australian Aborigines uh, of these characters called Quinkins. And the Quinkins are these very elongated beings that um, we might think of them as being like souls, possibly if you could see someone's soul. And they're um, like shadows in, in the landscape. And so that was, that was the title of that, that very first one. And um, I really liked the way it turned out and I like that idea. And so since then I've been tapping into that idea of how these, these shadowy figures that we see are really part of our past and they're acting out or illustrating these stories that we've heard on uh, how, how the world came to be the way it is. And so um, that's, that's what I'm tapping into there. And then um, I like to read mythology, world 
mythology stories. So, uh, and, and watch anime cartoon movies and um, just, uh, you know, read about people who just hunt for UFOs and all of that. I like tapping into all of that. So a lot of these um, are kind of illustrations of that idea out there and, and make me think of those things. And I want other people to think of those things too. And so that, that's why the titles kind of allude to those ideas. I do so, love your titles. Um, I think you're referencing the one that's called Looking at the UFO. Yeah, right. Uh -huh. That's one of those. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and that's that's actually a picture of a swimming pool. But uh -huh. that drain in the swimming pool looks like a vent on the side of a spaceship or something. You know. <laughs> See, looking at it, I thought it was like a drain like on the street. And that that spot was like just kind of a, you know, dirty spot on the street or something. Uh-huh. <laughs> That's really yeah. interesting. <laughs> well, it's wonderful to hear, you know, your, your, um, what your art is about, like from you, because of course, when people look at art, I feel like they just bring, you know, what they know and their own experiences to it. And that's what we do right. as viewers. <laughs> that's but what I'm meaning for, yeah. We really have no idea what the artist was thinking unless we read an artist statement or talk to the artist. So, and your okay. explanation, with the Native American, you know, mythology and all that. It's really beautiful. Thank you for sharing that. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so that one behind you, the mermaid there, that's, that's the kind of idea that um, she's coming up out of the sea to, to talk to people or to say hello or see what we're doing and we're seeing what she's doing, that kind of idea. <laughs> it's really cool. Um, so just a couple more questions and we'll be done. Um, do you have any plans for some new material or new subject matter or where do you see yourself uh, evolving from here and going forward? Well, I'm always taking pictures all the time. And um, as I said, I'm going through these old pictures that I've taken. Right. So um, I've already found a few things in there that I think that I'm going to eventually make prints of. But um, it's kind of a long process in the sense of not the actual time it takes to do each thing, but to kind of let things rattle around inside my head until they sort of surface and go through the different processes. And it's kind of a winnowing process. So, um, you know, I'll put them all in a, a category and I think, okay, these, these look like they'll make um, a good subject matter. So I'll turn them into monochromes and I'll make them bigger or smaller or just crop them in certain ways or something. And then I'll keep them for a while. And then um, I'll go and have them made into transparencies. Um, I used to do it myself on a Xerox machine, but they recently changed. And so they don't work nearly as well. So now I have them professionally made into a transparency. And that's, um, that's had the effect of making everything look a little crisper, but um, it loses the kind of, um, more ambiguous quality that you get when you're doing it yourself on a Xerox machine. So that's kind of a change that, mm -hmm. that I've gone through with, with technology, but, but I'm adjusting to it and um, getting used to the, the, this CRISPR quality. So, um, so in that sense, I'm changing, moving towards this kind of, uh, I've been doing some landscapes too, and they're really detailed. And you can get this really nice detail with this, these professional transparencies. So that's kind of a direction that I'm going into. But um, uh, I, I find that um, I'm always going back to the, the themes that I've had done before. So the series that I was most involved with in before the shadow one was with mannequins. Um, because I have, uh, have all these pictures of mannequins, but now I'm really um, aware of what people do with mannequins. So I see them everywhere <laughs> and I take, keep taking pictures of them. And eventually some of those end up their way into being a print too. So um, I, yeah, so a lot of my, I think it's because of my age, a lot of my work now is kind of backward looking, um, looking through the old photos and making them mm -hmm. to uh, prints. But I have, done a little of that in the past also because um, I took some of the photographs that my father took 
and turned them into prints as well. And that oh. was really an enjoyable thing. Yeah. Cool. So some of them are pictures of me as a tiny baby and you know <laughs> things like that. So that's kind of fun too. Cool. So, you know, who knows where I'll be going from here? But but now I'm kind of backward looking, I guess. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, so where else can we currently see your artwork on display? Um, I, I know you're an Austin artist. Right. Do you have work on display in Austin right now? Um, I think the only place that there's something on display in Austin right now is um, at one of the libraries. I think it's the St. John's Library. They um, have a display of uh, art from the Syria project. I'm not sure if you're familiar with that. Sam Carnado um, and his studio uh, used to have residencies every year and I did it one year. Okay. And so um, they were um, asked to put on a display of their prints in the window since you, know, you can't go into the libraries right now. But so they have this window and I think one of mine is in that window. Okay. Uh, from, from the Syria project from when I did a residency there. So um, I think that's the only one. That and I then think. there's another gallery here in Round Rock, correct? Right, yeah. Uh, oh, and then the time, time and Gallery too, yes. I'm over there as well from the, because I'm a member of Houston Print Matters. Oh yeah. So all of the members of Print Matters who were in their annual member show, that whole show was taken over to the Time and Gallery, and so my work is in that as well. Yeah, and that's a gallery over on May Street uh, here in Round Rock. Right. So mm -hmm. on January thirtieth, we're going to be in a gallery hop between me, the Team and Gallery, and the Downtowner uh, from three to seven. So oh, that's I also, I also cool. have in fact that that print that I was just talking about from the Syria project is in the Downtowner. Oh, so you have one there too. So you're in all three shows. <laughs> yeah, it's really different because it's a it's a silk screen, so okay. it doesn't look. Um, it's not photographic at all. It's drawings. Um, so actually, there it's a kind of a collage type situation. So there is a photograph in it of some trees, but um, mostly it's a drawing. I'll have to go check that out. <laughs> well, yeah, it's really colorful. It's different from. He's entirely, he would know it was the same artist probably. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, well, I want to thank you for being in this show, being a part of it, and also for interviewing with us and just giving us so much insight into your artwork. I really enjoyed talking to you today. Well, it's my pleasure. I'm, I'm so thrilled to have been invited. So thank you for that. Thank you so much. <laughs>